children, and the, and the community of psych. So, haste. Leave in mind a journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. There's a signpost up ahead. Next stop, Jake Steve's. Hi, hi, hi. Ye old long-haired freaky dude here, Jakey Steef, and today I'm going to review the Greek tragedy play, The Persians, by Aeschylus, translated into English verse by G.M. Cookson. This was a fairly great verse translation of the play, but, as usual, I prefer a good old prose translation. And because of its versy poeticness, this translation may just be hard to understand. Very hard. So I strongly suggest to read this while you're awake with your fullest attention. This is not something you read before going to sleep or in a noisy room. The best conditions are in a quiet room with a cup of coffee. <coughs> and a dictionary, because there are a lot of crazy words. But if you could get past all of this, there is actually a decent Greek tale to be told. I found this play to be much easier to follow than, say, The Suppliant Maidens. This one had less uh, praising from the chorus, more dialogue, and simpler language overall, which made it easier to read. But it is still a text which requires attentive minds to understand. Before proceeding, I, may, I warn you that I may just reveal a few spoilers, but only those that are necessary for rating this play. So what is it about? The play follows the death of Darius and the reign of his son Xerxes in the country of Persia, Empire of Persia. At the start of the play, Xerxes is off in a distant, foreign, and relatively unknown land of the Hellens, or the Greeks, making an attempt to take over their land for his army greatly outnumbers theirs. The play is centered around his mother Atossa and her, antici and her anticipation of his return. The play is a strong foundation of character development and the suspense of answering the question, how did Xerxes' conquest go? Action and depictions of battles are also plentiful. There isn't too much story to be told here, but as I said, there is character development. There is suspense, which makes it a great play. One which would fare well to a live performance, I imagine. Paranormal themes are woven into the play as well, which uh, play a major role. These are things which I never really associated with uber-old Greek texts, so it was a pleasant surprise. I mean, I understand they're in the Odyssey and such, but, I mean, they aren't major role. So, I mean, other than that, this is a tragedy. Uh, also sheds light on a few historical events, such as the Battle of Salamis, or quite simply the rulers of Persia, like Xerxes and Darius. Sure, it is, based, uh, sure it is a biased source, but there are still a few facts to be picked nonetheless. And... Like with other ancient plays, you might feel shortchanged at the end, or confused at the beginning. And that's because it's the second and only surviving part of a trilogy of plays. The first and the last do not exist. They weren't necessarily sequels per se, but they did fit together. And with that, I'll read the first few lines or so of The Persians by Aeschylus, so that you can determine whether or not you like this translation by G.M. Cookson. I don't know, you might just prefer a prose translation, but I mean, like I do, but I mean, uh, that's all I had access to. So, The Persians, by Aeschylus. We are the faithful minister, oh, no, an open place before the tomb of Darius. Chorus. We are the faithful ministers of Persia's absent sons that marched away to Hellas, their golden mansions, rich with all wealth and splendor, are in our trust and care for the great king, King Xerxes, Darius's son and heir, chose us as wise men well in years, the realm for him to hold, but for his homeward progress, his host a gleam will gold, the boding, the boding heart is hurried with auguries of ill, Asia is stripped of manhood, a king hath his will, but to this metropolitan, Proud siege of Persia's kings. No runner comes, no rider. Good news or bad news brings. To Susa and Egbatana. They bade a long farewell. They saw behind them sink from sight old Cassia's citadel. And some rode out on horseback, and some in long ships sailed. 
Stout plotters closing up their ranks, the footmen strode all mailed. A mistress hastis, a mistress's ha hastis with them, and great artifrenes, artifices, megabates, lord of richest satrapies. King, on whose throne a greater its majesty uprears, marshals of an uncounted host, bowmen and cavaliers, they sweep forever onward. Their daunting looks dismay, and jubilant are their high hearts for joy of coming fray. Lord of the bow, Emmaus, sun scenes, charioter, Atremes, the rider bold, whom charging squadrons cheer, maestries and pharadaces, with many a doughty fair, wh wh whom Nile, great nourisher of men, sent forth, Pegastogon, Egyptian born, Suscanes, and Artemis, whose wo whose Woan is sacred Mephis, there he rules. And Atriodarmit, uh, Ariomardus, Lord of Thebes, the ancient child of time. So, I mean, that's uh, the verse translation. It's got a bit of a rhythm there. Uh, so, it's up to you whether or not you want to read this. I suggest you do because it is a classic. Whether or not you do prose or verse, that's up to you. So, this is Jake Steve, the long-haired freaky dude, and LZ Productions, and a Biblio for All Productions, and I hope you have a super awesome, most spectacular, splendid, epically peachy day. <laughs>